everyone, it is Brenda from We Ladies 3 and since Chelsea did a video last month, I thought I would go ahead and do a video this month instead of my normal blog post. But this is in some ways a follow up to my previous blog post. So if you check on our website online at weladies3.wordpress.com, I did a blog post last month about the five adult fiction, mainly sci-fi and fantasy authors that for me they're just prose artists and they're the people that I really, um, whenever I'm reading, I can identify with, get over any traditional flaws that I find whenever it comes to reading and really enjoy. And so I thought I would follow up this month um, as doing something that is more along the lines of, so that was adult, so let's look at more of the young adult fiction and authors that I would pick as being kind of my top five whenever it comes to prose. But then I started thinking about it and the fact that whenever I was young and I was reading these books, for me it wasn't so much about the prose. Um, there were certain authors that were a lot more influential whenever it came to my reading habits, the things that I was interested in reading, what I chose to read. So in some ways as I grew older, prose became more influential whenever it came to my reading, but I thought for the young adult I would do something that focuses a little bit more on the authors that were very influential in my reading and the things that I kept going back to. And it was kind of funny, I'll get to this in a bit, but going through and thinking about some of those authors, there's similarities in some of the styles between what I was looking for whenever I was younger and what I look for now that I'm older. So let's go ahead and get started. So... <laughs> The adult one, I managed to narrow it down to five authors, and I wanted to do the same with this one, but unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, that's kind of a weird thing to say, I could only narrow it down to six, so it's close enough to five if we round, kind of, maybe, not really. Um, so these were the authors that struck me whenever I was trying to go through and think about influential authors for me whenever I was growing up. And I kind of limited this specifically because, as you can see behind me, I got a lot of different books. And some of them I wrote whenever I was um, teenager, young adults, preteen, that kind of thing. And then some of them are books that I've acquired now that I've gotten older. Um, so I tried to focus this more specifically on that period of time, really roughly between like 13 and 17, whenever I was looking for books that were transitioned from the middle grade books into something that was a little bit more adult fiction. Um, so this is kind of my young adult transition period that we're going through. So the first author that I um, go over is going to be Megan Whalen Turner, and she does the Queen's Thief series. These are much loved books for me. I read them a whole lot whenever I was younger, and I was super into Greek mythology. Uh, and this one has a similar basis to that Greek Roman area. So I think that's the first thing that drew me, but her writing was very intriguing to me. I liked just the um, character of Jin in the books. It was something that drew me a whole lot. There was a culture and a life that was going on there, and so I just really fell in love with Megan Whalen Turner and all of the different books in this series. I will say with trilogies, I tend to have a thing for the first book and the last book. So I will say that The Queen of Atolia was not my favorite out of the series, but I really, even saying that, I really love the whole thing and I love all of the books. So Megan Whalen Turner was definitely on that list of influential authors for me whenever I was growing up. The next one, and this is where I kind of have a tie because I couldn't exactly pick which of these two I would put on the list. So I figured, eh, we'll throw them both on. And the first one is Claire B. Dunkel with the Hollow Kingdom series. And then the second one is Alison Crogan with the naming, um, the Pelinor series. Those were two books that um, I read Hollow Kingdom, oh gosh, maybe whenever I was about 15. And I just loved the world. I loved the idea of these goblins as being something that is not necessarily an ugly or a terrible um, race, but it's something that's a little bit um, more unknown, more distant. They've got a different culture. They've got a different background. And it's just ugly to us because we're not from that area. I liked the twist that she gave to those characters and the ideas of the goblins versus the elves. Um, 
So that's the Hollow Kingdom series is a big one for me as well. It's one I kept on going back to. The other one, um, the Alice and Krog and the Pelinor books. Um, this was probably a little bit towards those older years, maybe 15 to 16, um, where I started to want to look for something that had a little bit more um, weight to it. And as you can see, this is a bit of a thick book. And I don't know if you can see them up there, but the other three are fairly th thick as well. Um, and so I was looking for something that there was, it wasn't going to be a fast read, it was going to be an in-depth read. And her writing style in this in particular, I just really loved the characters. Again, since it's a series, I've got favorite books in it. But I just really loved the characters, I loved the story, I loved the idea of it. Uh, so this is another book that I kept on coming back to. The next one on there is going to be Garth Nix and the Abhorzen series. These books were my favorite of favorite things growing up. I loved Lyriel and Sabriel and I wanted to be there and now that I'm an adult I'm like ooh no maybe not with the zombies but whenever I was in my teens reading these books I was like yes I want to be there I want to do that I want to have the bells and have Mogget and um so this was really a key series for me and he does a very interesting job I think writing about the magic, writing about how the magic and the culture combine and connect. And so I think as an adult, I see that and I know that that's something I really appreciated. But whenever I was a teen and I didn't really have the words to express that, it was the way that he developed the world. It was the thoughts that he put into it. It was the lore and the people and the way he developed it that really kind of drew me into it. The next one that I will say, and this is probably going more towards my younger years, but a huge influence for me whenever it came to reading and books that I wanted to keep going through and push forward um, and continue to read, no matter what was going on in my personal life, was definitely Brian Jocks. As you can see behind me, there's quite a few books in his Breadwall series, but those were a big one for me growing up, um, just the imagination and the people, animals, the animals. Um, just the imagination, the culture, the different groups of people, um, the true rebel at heart that I was, I always wanted to be one of the like foxes or something like that. But uh, we had a discussion in the car um, on our way to Scarborough previously where we determined I probably would be more of a badger if anything. But those series, they were a huge one for me. And um, they were kind of the characters that I lived with whenever I was in my preteens. I didn't grow up with Harry Potter. I mean, it was um, one of the major series whenever I was growing up, but I personally did not grow up with it. That's something I ended up reading in college. So I would say the world that a lot of people lived in with Harry Potter growing up, for me, it was going to be more the Red Wall and kind of linked to that Narnia with C.S. Lewis. Um, the last author that I want to go ahead and point out who will always probably be a big influence and influencer and someone that I constantly go back to is one of the authors that I always wanted to read growing up um, would be Robin McKinley. McKinley was actually uh, introduced to me by my dad, which is in some ways kind of funny because he's never been much for the fantasy fiction, but he bought me the book Beauty whenever I was a teenager because that was kind of a nickname that he had for me. And I read Beauty, absolutely loved it, started looking for other books that Robin McKinley wrote. And Robin McKinley for me, um, I read online in a blog post that she had posted quite a while ago about someone had told her that she was to them what J.R.R. Tolkien is in general to fantasy and fiction. She was kind of that major introduction. And I would say Robin McKinley similarly to that comment for me she was a major introduction to fantasy she was a major introduction to these worlds and these magics and these ideas that you could have inside fantasy so for me Robin McKinley will always be one of those authors that um, I point people to and particularly the blue sword and the hero and the crown series those were among my favorites but there are very few things that she's written that have not been things that I recommend to people so Definitely, I would say those six authors are people who were huge influences on my reading whenever I was younger. Um, and they were people that whenever I read their books, I wanted to keep going back and keep reading more so that even if I'm busy with other things or even if I 
uh, had school or something going on, those were the authors that I wanted to go back to and read and get invested in um, and lead me to being reading a lifelong passion. So while I would say the adult authors that I point out in the blog post are the people who um, they give me that same thrill reading, um, I would say that these young adult authors gave me the same thrill whenever I was in my teens that the adult authors that I pointed out here recently um, in my blog post last month give me as an adult whenever it comes to reading books. So they're definitely the ones that I remember fondly of my childhood and they're the ones that um, I would probably point to as being ones what did you really read whenever you were you know in your teen years those would be the ones that I would point to those were my influencers whenever it came to books and the kind of books that I wanted, which is funny. So thinking of them as influencers and kind of translating that to the adult books. So I kind of talked about the fact that there was this thrill of reading that I got with them, but I started thinking about these books and I realized that in some ways these authors have similar qualities um, to the authors that I read now. So like I talked about how with Neil Gaiman, he just has this kind of I mean, they all have a poetry to the way they write, but he has a different kind of poetry where even if I don't always understand what he's talking about, he both wraps it up beautifully and the way he describes it, it's something that I want to stick with and, and follow through until the end. Um, and so for me, Robin McKinley is very similar to that um, with Nindy Okorafor and um, J.M. McDermott. I kind of talked about the worlds that they built and I feel like you get that with the Alison Crogan series and with um, Garth Nix and the Aporzen trilogy and with Pratchett I talked about you know the wit and the interest that he has um, just in the way that he writes and I feel like it's not witty in the same way but Brian Jacks to me um, very similar just the creativity that he injects into the stories with Redwall and giving life to these characters to me there's a um, at least fondly in my childhood memories, there's a similarity between him and Terry Pratchett. And Claire B. Junkle, I think, was just one of those like guilty pleasure authors. Um, but again, just kind of taking those similar, I guess, to Nindy for taking those standard tropes that you see and being able to turn them just enough that, at least as a teenager, it was something I had never uh, read before. So those are probably, I would say, my biggest influencers. Um, if you want to read a little bit more about the adult authors, I will put the link in the description box below. Um, and then I guess my biggest question for you guys, so who were influencers for you as a teenager, a young adult, whenever it came to reading and the books that you read now? So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and we look forward to talking to you guys later. Bye.